Prime Minister pausing his remarks, saying he need to assist a student. Welcome back to Moose and the Loose. My name's David. In today's top stories, we've got a fail from Guy Bo. We've got the Grocery Code of Conduct, beginnings of that. There's some developments there. We've got the Black Block uh, types doing, doing their thing. We've got a little girl can't stomach listening to Justin Trudeau during a uh, one of his photo ops, as well as some other things. Let's jump into this. First up, we got this clip here posted by uh, Wiretap Media. It says, uh, in the spirit of reconciliation, it only took climate con man Stephen Gilbo a month to put out an executive order to stop a company from poisoning indigenous communities water supply in the Sarnia area. You have ordered petrochemical companies in Sarnia to implement controls to limit emissions of the cancer causing chemical benzene. Um, the Amgen First Nations community has been reporting high levels of this mm -hmm. chemical for almost a month and illness as well. Um, why did it take your government so long to take action? Um, actually, I was made aware uh, in a meeting with members of the community three weeks ago of oh, what the situation was. Three weeks. <laughs> and we're putting in place a, an emergency uh, order today, specifically regarding one company, uh, which is responsible for, for those benzene emissions. Um, in, we've, we've acted promptly. Uh, I, would, um, I would challenge you to try and find an instances where the federal government uh, was so quick to, uh, to, to act in the, in the history of the country, I don't think you will find one. It is one of the most rapid response that we have deployed, uh, both the federal federal Department of Environment and Climate Change in collaboration with with, with uh, expert from uh, from Health Canada. Rapid response, really? What if a building was on fire? Are you going to wait three weeks to put out the fire? Like, how is that any different than a town catching on fire? They should be treating this as if so uh, something is on fire and it should be dealt with like right now like within the next 24 hours this is dealt with i can just i smell the lawsuits in the air next up we got this uh, quick clip here <laughs> trudeau liberal mp shows up to committee in a hoodie this is <laughs> they don't even care anymore they're like yeah we're gonna lose the election why not mr chair before we do point of order could i get a ruling on the attire that's required uh at a at a committee meeting please <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chambers, in um, in committees, there um, there is no attire requirements. Okay, thank you. Yep. So back to the point of order, Chair. Uh, point of order, Mr. Turnbull. Yep. So, <laughs> Chair, have you made a ruling as to how to proceed? That's it. That's the whole clip. But yeah, you can see here he he's just went you know went for a jog, just come back in. Yeah, no problem. Don't need to put a suit on or anything. Just just throw on the hoodie. We're good to go. We hit the gym afterwards. No problem. We just want to be clear on who that is. It's Ryan Turnbull, uh, Liberal Whit Whitby, Ontario. So. <laughs> There you go, buddy. Just where, where's your hoodie, buddy? Next up, we got the grocery code of conduct. Uh, this is one of uh, Champagne's things that he's been working on. This whole thing is a joke, but basically you'll see that they're trying to work out a deal that gets all of them to sign on, but they all have to sign on or it doesn't make sense. ...do as well. So far, Metro and Sobeys have signaled support for the plan, but Walmart and Costco have not yet agreed. I'd like to start, if I could, Minister, with the latest developments on the Grocery Code of Conduct, with Loblaws now saying it's willing to sign on if all of its competitors do, uh, including companies like Walmart, which has still not agreed to sign on to this. What's your reaction to, to this move by Loblaws? Well, first of all, it's, it's, it's welcome news. I mean, we've been pushing in the background, and I want to acknowledge the work done by Minister McCauley, Minister Lamartin, Quebec, all the industry. You know, when I met with the independent grocers of Canada, they said that the grocery code of Canada would be essential to bring more, more transparency and more fairness in, into the balance of power between the different actors, especially protecting the small guys. Now that Loblaws have done that, the full pressure is on Walmart and Costco now, uh, because uh, that's what Canadian consumers expect. That's what we want as a government, and you can expect that we've already been in contact with them uh, to put the pressure to say they need not to sign up to the code of conduct. We have the three largest uh, grocers in the country with Metro, Sobeys and Loblaws and, and certainly uh, we're going to be pushing them uh, to make sure that we have both Walmart and Costco now part also of that that scheme that we want to see in Canada. He's celebrating a little too early. Loblaws hasn't even committed unless the other ones come in. Loblaws will come in last. So you basically have two out of five. And what does that even mean? Are they going to really reduce their prices? We all know it's a few factors. Corporate greed, they use the world event that happened a couple of years ago to jack their prices. We also know the carbon tax is jacking the prices because everything is transported on trucks. 
So until the teleporter is invented, the prices are not coming down unless you ax that bloody tax. Later on in this interview, they bring in this guy, Michael von Vassau. He's a food economist, and he had some interesting things to say on this. I think that, that Loblaws has been feeling pressure, whether the boycott is uh, affecting their business or not. The, 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 the news cycle hasn't been very kind to them the last two or three weeks. And, and this is a way to, to change the narrative a little bit. I also think that there's been some time passed and Loblaws said, well, we've gotten some of the things we want out of this. My expectation is they've taken some of the they've negotiated so it's a little more palatable to them. So it's not the same agreement it was two or three weeks ago. And so it's easier for them to accept. And frankly, I think food prices are coming down. And if they are starting to lose some margin because they've got to treat the suppliers better, it's easier to hide uh, price increases or sort of, it's easier to hide margin main maintenance when prices are going down. They might just go down a bit slower. So. Let me know down below if you guys have lower food prices. I always just benchmark it on the price of frozen green peas. They were a buck and they're still $2.60 right now. So it's up a full 160% extra on top. The grocery code of conduct is gonna set parameters around the relationship between grocery stores and their suppliers. Grocery stores, like Loblaws, have significant market share and they say to those manufacturers, if you'd like to be on our shelves, this is what we're going to require. This pricing, uh, these listing fees, these other fees, these payment terms and other things. If that gets reduced, which is what the Grocery Code of Conduct does, it means that profits at Loblaws will go down. If product profits at Loblaws go down, there are two things that can happen. The first is they just accept lower profits and, uh, and, and drive on. That's unlikely to happen. The other one is that they'll increase their prices. It's unlikely that they'll say, okay, it's costing us more at, at the cost of goods sold end. So we're gonna lower prices so that we even further decrease our profits. I think this is a good thing to do. It levels the playing field for the smaller, particularly independent grocers. Mm. But I don't think, I'm not optimistic that it will give us much relief from uh, from high food prices. Now we're seeing food prices go down and we'll probably all say, oh, look, the grocery code of conduct is working, but it's not coming in for a year. And, and, and just the mechanism of the grocery code of conduct, I'm not optimistic it will bring prices down further. He said it right there. It, it's, it's still a year before this comes in. Probably not gonna do anything by the time Trudeau gets kicked out of power. So I wouldn't hold your breath on this one. The real thing to talk about here is why is it that Dollarama can sell ketchup for two twenty-five or organic rice crackers for a dollar fifty? If I were to buy that in a store, it's like four bucks or three bucks or whatever. Like it's more than double the price for the exact same thing. There's something fishy going on here, and I have a feeling that the Dollarama stock is one that you might want to take a look at because over the time here, it's going to just keep going up at least for the next year or so. If I were a betting man. This is not financial advice. We know full well that Galen Weston's not going to lower prices because Papa Galen needs a new yacht. So next up, we got this clip here. Justin Trudeau with another food school program announcement. The thing to pay attention to here is not him talking. It's actually this little girl here. And so I'll make it full screen when this plays so you can watch her. But as you can see her right now, she's standing. But in 10 seconds, she's going to be on the ground down here. So I'll play the clip and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Share a past in schools uh, and it's what brings us here today, uh, understanding how we need to put uh, put kids uh, first and foremost, not just for today, but for tomorrow. Uh, we need more uh, teachers and educators in politics. So it's uh, it's great to see uh, see you as, as part of this. And it's so great to work with such uh, a positive progressive government here in Manitoba. We can get great things done uh, as we work together. Oh, we're just gonna take a little break right now uh, while we take care of this young person. All right, Andrew Thompson, back with you. As you can see, uh, the Prime Minister uh, pausing his remarks at this news conference uh, in Winnipeg, uh, saying he needs to assist a student who has uh, gone down to the ground. And it looks like uh, the Prime Minister and the other uh, officials taking part in this news conference are now. 
So assisting this little girl, he seemed to be the slowest one to assist that girl. First off, the irony of what he says just before this happens. Uh, understanding how we need to put uh, put kids uh, first and foremost, not just for today, but for- Put kids first, right? <laughs> just watch how this guy puts kids first. We can get great things done uh, as we- So he is looking directly at that girl. His, his eye line is directly looking at her. He sees her fall. And these two are like, oh, uh, you can see this woman's actually shocked. And just look how slow he is to react. Work together. Oh, we're just going to take a little break right now uh, while we take care of this young person. Like, easy there, Grandpa Trudeau. <laughs> don't, don't move any slower now. You got to wonder, would he have just dropped the mic and jumped over there if it was his own kid? He seemed more interested in making sure he says, oh, we're going to take a little bit of break, blah, 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 handling the mic versus jumping over there. You know what would have been good for PR, Justin, is if you stop speaking immediately as you're looking directly at this girl as she's falling down, drop the, the mic, stop talking and jump over there and catch her. If you actually showed concern for another human being for once. All right, Andrew. Like he's just clumsily like, trying to do something looks like he's helping. So what happened here? Well, what I can tell you is anyone who's ever been a part of a wedding and you're not the one getting married, you're the one standing in the wedding party at the front and it's a hot day, you're <laughs> in a hot country, whatever, it's happened to me multiple times, you're standing there and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting. You get woozy like you're about to pass out, your blood is not circulating, you're just standing there. I bet you they set up this whole thing you can see a wide shot here so they got all the cameras in here they got all these people waiting they set up the lighting audio equipment mic check all that stuff and they probably had them standing there like okay let's frame you guys up let's get you in order we got to get this all nice and perfect and they had these little kids standing here for probably way too long blood sugar crashed and she probably just couldn't even handle trudeau speaking she's like you're just full of crap and a liar <laughs> I hope she's fine. It was probably they're just standing there too long waiting for his stupid press conference. Like when it comes to kids, why not just go into the school while they're doing some sort of self book report thing where it's not being taught and they know they're coming in and then stand and like talk to some of the kids while they're working or whatever. Like, why does it have to be like, hey, everyone stand in this line. Like, oh, these are just so embarrassing. These people are forced to look like they're supporting this idiot. It's obvious every time you see this, people are so uncomfortable back there. They don't want to be back there. They just don't want to lose their jobs. They just stand there and you can see it on their faces. Great. Great things done uh, as we work together. Oh, we're just going to take a little break right now uh, while we take care of this young person. He's looking right at her. Anyways, let's move on. Next up, we got this clip here, which has Chris Stacy. I've often showed many clips from Chris Stacy on the channel here, and he was in a situation like that, except it was more one way against him. Uh, with these these Antifa black block people the ones with the all they wear all black they cover their faces They look like they're people who uh, we don't want in our country It says here at Confederation Park in Ottawa as we sought to report on transgender themed rally headline by Faye Johnston He was basically uh, socked right in the eye with zero police presence at this protest So Chris Dacey, you're my day's colleague. Tell me what happened about 30 minutes ago. Yeah, so um, I mean what happened with me first uh, when we arrived here there was uh there was a hostile crowd that we were met with um as rob i was filming rob tried to go in and uh, was immediately intercepted um pushed and there was a bit of pushing around um rob and i came out for a little while and we decided we were going to try to go in and get a bit of film and whatnot and uh people in black blocks so there was at least three of them uh, maybe four um one of these people in black block came in and, and grabbed my phone um i tried to grab them then uh, in that kind of melee i got punched right in the head i, I don't really know how it all happened can, can we just document that for a moment yeah, yeah. turn your face a bit yeah, pretty severe. Yeah, I'm still a little, uh, yeah. you know, shock's the right word, but uh, yeah, it got me good. So um, I, I kind of, my phone went flying. I was looking for my phone and, and trying to get my phone as it had all the uh, the evidence of the, the assaults from earlier, right. the, the ongoing assaults, and plus our footage from today. Um, and then as I tried to get the phone, somebody came in and just clocked me. Um, it's hard to know. It might, they may have had something. I don't know if I was hit with something, but it, uh, it hit pretty good. Um, I went down, the guy went down on top of me, and luckily um, there was someone there that pulled him off eventually, but... I went down pretty hard. So uh, one, one thing I want to let the audience know that I saw that you didn't in the scramble for the phone. I went for the phone. It was grabbed 
more quickly by someone else. It was then thrown towards a tree, which is sort of seen behind your uh, left shoulder. Yeah. And I went for the phone at that point. It was on the ground. And I sort of uh, bumped into this other dude. He rolled over. I then scrambled to get the phone, which was still on the ground. And this uh, black block Antifa girl grabbed it and then threw it into the crowd beyond the perimeter. And it was lost at that point, stolen. Yeah, so they threw it behind the line, for lack of a better term. And, and I mean, so so they, I mean, they, they basically, so there's like a, multiple people contributing to an assault. And then also people that are stealing the phone, and now they've they've worked together to throw it over into the perimeter and make sure that all the evidence and all their footage is gone too. So I mean, there's a few things going on here, and there's a, a noticeable complete absence of police. Have you seen one cop? I haven't. No, no, no. Okay. They're completely devoid of police, and I've never been to one. I've been to a lot of these. You have as well. Same. Um, and I've never seen one that doesn't have police. This is crazy. I mean, look at his face here. He got clocked, man. Blunt force trauma to the head is attempted murder. So I hope he sues those people. I hope he gets names of them. We all know nothing's going to happen. So like what? <laughs> the problem with this is if they, nothing happens from this, he gets his phone stolen. He gets attacked, blunt force trauma to the head. At one point, do Canadians not stand up and then go in there and like, oh, it's okay, Antifa, we'll take care of you guys. There's going to be a counter force that comes in because you can't just have one group continually doing this crap to Canadians. Eventually, Canadians will snap and... It's not going to be nice. So how about we just have the law work as it sh should be, as it intended. Uh, press some charges here for a whole bunch of people who are obviously involved in it, throwing the phone and all that kind of stuff. Get all these people in jail. Let's have our society operate as it should be. Men in black beating up journalists, almost like fascists. If police enforced one simple law, this type of behavior would be less common. It is illegal to wear a mask when participating in an unlawful assembly. Enforce that. Or how about blunt force trauma to the head? That one too. Next up, we got this clip here. It says uh, Canadian big tech companies and venture capitalist firms are already packing their bags and heading south of the border because Christia Freeland's communist tax hike. You wrote an op-ed about this. Mm. Talk to us about the issues that face the tech sector. Yeah, it's very simple. Higher taxes, less capital available. Less capital available means diminishing ownership. Multiply effect is less economic benefits, period. So it's so obvious to everyone, Canadians should own a significant piece of great Canadian companies giving away <laughs> our grand prize to foreign countries. Have we seen any consequence? I mean, are, are, are you talking with companies because you're a VC now who are looking at possibly leaving? Perhaps, let me summarize you know, in one word, loss of anger. We all collectively feel like the policymakers are forgetting the fact that we are entering a new era. We are transitioning from the industrial age to the information age. We are transitioning from tangible assets to intangible assets. And as a result, uh, we need to own these technologies. We need to own these IPs. We need to own these companies. Kind of going backward, and the, it's, it's not just an anecdote from me. I have survey results to back me up. For example, a recent survey, uh, which was done after the, the uh, tax change announcement, 95%, I repeat, 95% of the founders believe that Canada is not the best place to grow the company. The numbers don't lie. We have seen entrepreneurs already packing up. In fact, I just learned that uh, a venture fund, even an investment fund manager, plans to wrap up the fund before, on June 24th and pack up and go. I don't think this is an empty threat. This is, this is really real. And if you look at the broader picture, and, and let's step back and look, look at the, the, the Forbes uh, top 50 AI list of amazing AI companies, 40 out of the 50 are based in the US. Mm -hmm. And only two are Canadian companies. And guess what? Out of the 40, uh, many of them are started by Canadian founders, including the co-founder and chief scientist of, of OpenAI. Why can't Canada ever be great? <laughs> I mean, even just going down in Canada, we had the food thing earlier, the food prices. If we could just get Walmart's American prices in Canada, we would be set. Food is so cheap down there. We've got venture capitalists going down there. Why can't we just be competitive? Why can't we make it a place where if you work hard here in Canada, you get paid, you get to keep your money. There's someone posted in my group here. We'll jump over there for some memes uh, shortly here. But the guy was talking about how he lost a quarter of his bonus. He gets quarterly bonuses based on his sales. And he lost a quarter of it, of that quarterly bonus, to Justin Trudeau, the taxes. Can we not have some rules where if Canadians work hard, they get paid more? 
Like if you work double time, you don't have to pay tax on it. You have to work 1.5 time. If you work any overtime, you don't pay tax on it. Bonuses, you don't pay tax on it. Can we have some rules where it in incentivizes Canadians to work hard and work above and beyond? Right now, this country, it penalizes us for working hard. And maybe that's their plan. They want to get everybody on UBI. They want to get everyone hooked on it. And then they can just fleece us and take our money and send it off to Ukraine and put it in their little piggy banks or whatever they're doing. If you think about our immigration system, it has worked for decades. It was the best in the world. We always brought in the best people. Now we bring in the worst people and we are losing our best people. So jumping over to my group here, let's check out some memes. When you inherit a classic Mercedes, but you're dead set on owning a Jag. <laughs> I don't know what we're looking at here in this video, but yeah, this is a guy who's starting fires. A lot of fires. I mean, this should be serious punishment for doing this kind of stuff. So we've got this here, uh, POV going out at 10 p.m. in Kyiv, Ukraine. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna mute that. People having a good time. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on in Ukraine. Because I've seen multiple videos like this, and it's like, where's our $3 billion going? $100 million to a museum, and where's the rest? Missed one day of work, and my check was $200 less. Work one extra day, and only made $7.20 more. Yeah, this summarizes Canada right here. An evil man will burn his own nation to the ground to rule over the ashes. <laughs> yeah. Support the country you live in or go live in the country you support. Yeah, exactly. It's time to start seeing Canadian protests for Canadians. The trick is to stop thinking of it as your money. Yeah, <laughs> Revenue Canada. The most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. <laughs> Who's your daddy? Gross. Here's a list of Trudeau scandals. Yeah, we can't read that. There's <laughs> there's too many. Canadian lives matter. Don Cherry. Fun fact, the topaz hummingbird is the smallest bird in the world. Even though it has the smallest brain in existence, it knows there are only two genders. <laughs> well, that's going to wrap up this episode. Thanks for watching here. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about that little girl passing out while standing in the background there of Trudeau's school food program announcement thing and whether you think companies will come back to Canada, bring their money back, their investments after Pierre Polyev acts as the tax, changes the capital gains inclusion rate, all that stuff while changing those policies is simple. Once a company moves, if they move their headquarters, if they're moving staff, their personnel, that's not such a simple thing. I mean, it's a costly thing to do. So it has to be big incentive to come back. So this is really going to just keep hurting our country. Trudeau is doing everything possible to tank this country. We got to get this piece of garbage out of power, out of parliament, out of our country. That is the one silver lining to this is Trudeau will not be welcome anywhere in this country ever again for the rest of his life. Anywhere he goes, he will be heckled. He will not be made to feel welcome in Canada ever again. So I suspect we'll see videos of Trudeau being heckled for years and decades to come. So thanks for watching the end of the video here. Be sure to subscribe, turn on the bell notification. Maybe if we ring that bell enough, it'll make Justin Trudeau leave the country and go away. Ring the bell, turn it on. If you guys want to check out my hiking content here that I recently uploaded, some more Trudeau madness over there. We'll keep fighting for freedom. I'll see you guys in the next one.